Hi everyone, and welcome to Placeology. I'm Megan. And I'm Andrew. And we make videos that celebrate and compare the places that are all around us. And this week we're talking about the Ivy League of Colleges. Now, just for a quick bit of background if you're not familiar, the Ivy League is an elite group of eight colleges in the Northeastern United States. You've probably heard of at least some of them, like Harvard and Yale, and maybe some of them you're a little less familiar with, like Dartmouth or Brown. All of these schools consistently rank among the best in the country and the world, but in this video we're taking a look at the Ivy League from a fresh perspective, taking it a little bit further than academics because we know they have great programs. This is more about what makes each place so great, if they are great, and judging them based more on their location and campus, including how they might be viewed by the average tourist. To do this, we came up with a few categories to score each school on, including campus architecture, overall campus feel and accessibility, the town where it's located, the quality and availability of good food, and proximity to bigger cities, beaches, etc. Before we jump into our list, take a second and subscribe to our channel if you're interested in seeing more content like this. Now, here we go! Coming in at the bottom of our list is Dartmouth College in Hanover, New Hampshire. While accessible by car, the proximity of Hanover to basically anything is pretty terrible. For example, the drive to even the closest McDonald's is 11 minutes, which may not seem like much, but is definitely the longest driving distance of the Ivies. Beyond just the basic fast food joints, you'd be driving over an hour from Dartmouth to get to places like a Whole Foods or a Chipotle, and about two hours to get to the closest major city, Boston, or to get to a beach. For those who love nature or a true small town vibe, though, Dartmouth may be an appealing option. The area features close proximity to multiple trails and natural areas, with the Connecticut River running right through Hanover and forming the border to Vermont, known as the Green Mountain State for its gorgeous mountain scenery. Dartmouth alumni and I talk about the unique and interesting small towns throughout this nature's area, but a word of warning about the winter here, it can be brutal. Hanover averages 68 inches of snow per year, with an average winter low temperature of 8 degrees, and in our experience of visiting towns this far north of New England, Many shops and restaurants anticipate the winter drop in business and may close up for up to six months of the year. If you're looking for a traditional style of campus, mostly brick New Englandy architecture with a pretty typical collegiate feel, then Dartmouth may be your place. But in our opinion, there isn't much to elevate Dartmouth's campus above the average or distinguish it as an elite Ivy status that it is. But if all of this doesn't deter you and you want to join the ranks of Dr. Seuss, Robert Frost, and Shonda Rhimes, then you may find a cozy home at Dartmouth. Coming in at number seven is Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. Some of the best things about Cornell, according to our ranking system, include the architecture and overall campus feel. You'll find a mix of old and new architectural styles on the Cornell campus, including intricate designs and an iconic bell tower that well represents the school. Cornell alumni talk about the quads that give the campus a strong and cohesive academic feel, and the surrounding town of Ithaca is of a decent size with a population of 30,000 residents. The surrounding Finger Lakes region is also a point in Cornell's favor, as it is a gorgeous and well-renowned vacationing spot. Hurting Cornell in our rankings, though, like Dartmouth, is proximity to anything more major than you can find in town. And while Ithaca has plenty of major grocery, restaurant, and hotel chains to keep you covered, you're looking at a major drive for anything else. The closest large city is Syracuse, an hour drive to the north, and despite being in New York State, you're still a four-hour drive from New York City. Basically, Cornell is majorly out of the way from anything. We've taken several trips through the Northeast, including quite a few to and through New York, and never came anywhere close to Cornell along the way. Either way, though, Cornell is still a great school, and if you decide to attend or even visit, you'll be walking in the footsteps of the likes of Jane Lynch, Bill Nye, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Coming in at number six, and this might be our most controversial ranking on the list, is Harvard University in Boston, Massachusetts. The name Harvard might be the most iconic and well-known of the Ivies, conjuring images of some of the best and brightest. Or, if you're like us, a pink-clad Elle Woods walking in on her first day of law school. What? Like it's hard? But we found a trip through Harvard's campus to be somewhat underwhelming. We've been to a lot of college campuses, at least along the East Coast, and we're surprised that Harvard seemed fairly common among them. Maybe this is because other schools have copied the Harvard form. After all, it is the oldest higher learning institution in the country, but there seemed to be nothing that made Harvard stand out as the distinguished place we all know it to be. Thankfully for Harvard, though, its most redeeming factor is its urban location, just across the Charles River from the heart of New England's biggest city, Boston. 
As you'd expect with a major city, everything you could possibly need or want is within reach, with a strong public transportation system and plenty of ways in and out. Not to mention the easy access to gorgeous coastline and classic New England seafood. I mean, who could turn down a casual weekend trip to Cape Cod? Prepare yourselves for those winters, though, because, as any Bostoner knows, the well above average snow and rain can feel never-ending. And in an urban area where you're more likely to have to walk to where you need to go, a good collection of winter coats is a necessity. But if you're wanting life in a bigger city and don't mind the below average campus feel or the harsh winters, then the institution that brought us Mark Zuckerberg, Neil deGrasse Tyson, and Rashida Jones may be just for you. Number five on our list is Princeton University, located in, you guessed it, Princeton, New Jersey. Princeton received high marks for its accessibility and overall college feel. This college town and the campus itself, stylistically, are what dreams are made of. The buildings have, at least to us, the most cohesive and collegiate feel of the Ivies, and really show off that extra prestige and influence that these schools have. Plus, from a tourist perspective, it's really easy to see this beautiful campus both on foot and by car. These two factors, and the easy commute to some nearby major cities like Philadelphia and New York City, all combined to rank Princeton higher on our list than the previous three. However, the fact that it is located in a smaller town did cause us to take some points off the total overall, since the school really does seem to be in the center of the town. That, and compared to the other schools, the dining options aren't as vast as they're mostly limited to one main street through the town. Beyond that, you'll probably be headed up or down Route 1 for a wider variety of options. Although, we have sampled a pretty awesome slice of cake from one of the local eateries along Princeton's main commercial thoroughfare, so there's definitely something to be said for the smaller eateries in town. Princeton is definitely a great option if you're looking for the college town vibe, but don't mind being outside of the hustle and bustle of a larger city. Plus, you could be concerned with some really neat notable alumni, including F. Scott Fitzgerald, John F. Kennedy, and former First Lady Michelle Obama. The University of Pennsylvania is placed at number four on our list. The school is located in the heart of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the southernmost of the Ivy League schools. The location of the school alone definitely helped us rank this one in the top half of our list. The proximity to everything going on in the city creates opportunities for even more to do beyond the classroom. That, and you can't beat its location for ensuring that you have access to whatever kind of food you might be looking for. Admittedly, Philly isn't among our favorite cities that we visited for a few different reasons, but it certainly scores higher marks for climate than the other Ivies, and that southernmost location gives it a unique advantage in its proximity to Washington, D.C. for the political enthusiasts. The Penn campus itself has an exciting mix of architecture and surprisingly has a true collegiate atmosphere. An architectural favorite of ours is the lovely College Hall, where the Office of Undergraduate Admissions is located, within Perelman Quadrangle. We will, however, admit that some of the others on this list have architecture that has us swooning even more. But if Philly is where you want to be, and the promise of slightly warmer winters has you feeling pretty good, then you might just find yourself walking the same halls as people like Elon Musk, John Legend, and Tori Birch. Well, here we are. We've reached the top three Ivies on our list. Coming in with a bronze medal is Columbia University, located in Morningside Heights in New York City. And honestly, all of the top three are truly something special. The Greek Revival architecture and the classic McKim, Mead, and White style of many of the buildings surrounding the green lawns and brick and stone courtyards in the center of campus create a little oasis from the hustle and bustle of the city that you could spend hours in, just taking in the beauty of Butler Library and Lowe Memorial Library, which stand opposite each other on campus. The only reason it didn't get top marks from us for architecture was because some might find the large scale of the architecture to be a little bit more imposing than your traditional collegiate architecture. But once you add in the location in New York City and the never-ending list of possibilities that come with that for things to do, to see, and to eat, and you have one of the coolest places to attend school. It even has its own subway stop. However, there are flip sides to attending school in a city as big as New York. Colleges in big cities consistently are noted to have less of a college feel than schools in suburban areas, since the campus itself becomes a part of the city. And then there's accessibility. Be prepared to consistently be on foot if you want to go to Columbia, since some of the dorms are located several blocks away from the main campus buildings. During the few weeks I spent doing a summer program at Columbia a few years ago, I tried my best to find ways to avoid having to walk those eight blocks any more than I had to, and not to mention the walk upstairs when you get to where you're going. But if the Big Apple is calling you and you want a pretty awesome school to attend, then Columbia might be the perfect place for you. And I personally recommend visiting this beauty even if you're a tourist. Besides, notable alumni include Alexander Hamilton, Kate McKinnon, and Julia Stiles. Ah, uh, Brown University. The sleeper hit of the Ivies, if you ask us. 
When most people think of the Ivy League, Providence, Rhode Island's Brown University is probably not the first school that comes to mind. And maybe if this video were all about academic prestige, there would be more arguing over this ranking. But when it comes to campus and location, we just couldn't get enough of Brown. Maybe it's because of how much we loved visiting nearby Newport, Rhode Island, and how picturesque the rocky coastline and blue waters were there. But we agree that if we were going to pack up and move to New England, it would probably be to the smallest state. After all, if it's good enough for Taylor Swift, it's good enough for the rest of us, right? Seriously, though, we also spent time in Providence taking a look around the city and around Brown's campus, and we were impressed. While the campus does lose a few points for not being incredibly cohesive and also being a little frustrating to navigate by car, there were a ton of students out and about enjoying the grassy central campus area and the nearby street of restaurants and shops. Providence may not be the biggest city out there, but it is a decently sized city and state capital. And Boston is less than an hour to the north to cover anything that Providence may lack. In our opinion, Brown is pretty hard to beat. While it might not be the flashiest option, Brown has a lot going for it, and alumni Emma Watson, John Krasinski, and David Diggs all seem to agree. Only one Ivy League university was able to beat out Brown University's score in our methodology. So time for the big reveal! Drum roll, please. Yale! Yale! The top honors in our Ivy League campus rating goes to Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut. Even with academic prestige aside, Yale has so much going for it, but it was really our architecture rating in particular that pushed it over the top to win out here. Despite being in a city of a pretty decent size, you can get a pretty good look at all of Yale's collegiate glory just by driving around it. Though a walk through the campus would certainly have the most quintessential college feeling. New Haven is a great mid-sized city with everything you could need day to day and plenty of local attractions too. Lots of great food options in the area. We're not locals by any means, but we stopped by Frank Pepe's Pizzeria on our trip through town and had a fantastic meal we highly recommend. As far as the broader location goes, it has many of the same things going for it as Brown, like the coastline and beaches being so close by and the major cities not much further. New York City is just an hour away. In fact, close enough for a nice Friday night date or a day trip on the weekend for some sightseeing. A Metro North train line actually runs directly from Grand Central Station all the way out to New Haven, so you wouldn't even have to worry about rush hour traffic. Ultimately, it would make such a strong case for Yale's campus and location that it would be a top-tier college choice even without names like Merrill Streep, James Franco, and both President Bushes, helping to make Yale the icon that it is. So there you have it. The Ivy League schools rank from best to worst on everything but academics. We hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know in the comments if you agree or disagree with our rankings and tell us what kind of place-based video you'd like to see from us in the future. And once again, if you like this kind of content, then don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, Thanks everyone! everyone.